Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. To those guests who've just joined us, welcome. Our next stop is the Magic Kingdom. Ladies and gentlemen, we are approaching our station at the entrance to Main Street, USA, gateway to the seven theme lands of the Magic Kingdom. Welcome aboard the Monday Morning Monorail Podcast. This is Justin Monorail, and I've got my Monorail family here in the Monorail Studios with me today. Let us introduce them one by one. Or should I say they're going to introduce themselves? I think I'll go with that. Leading off, the birthday girl. Oh, it's not my birthday anymore. It's your birthday. No. Still your birthday. Set me at the monorail and it is not my birthday anymore. I am officially my back hurts. No. <laughs> That's a weird age. Yeah. Well, happy birthday. Thanks. Birthday was New Year's Eve. Yeah, it's done. Do you consider December or January to be more your birthday month? December. Yeah, but it happens right at the end. It doesn't matter. It's still my birthday month. Like, officially, I was born in December. I guess. I was. You just claim both. Mm. Two months of birthday. Okay. But also, by the way, there's another birthday coming up this month. Just reminder. <gasps> Jen. I love Cardillo Snyder. Her birthday's coming up this month. Oh. Said the whole name. My bad. Uh, let's move on. <laughs> no, you can find it online. <laughs> I know. They say it on their <laughs> podcast. Let's now introduce the younger of the two children. I don't know. I, I don't, I've never learned my, lane, my name. You're lame. My lame. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a slip up. We could give you a new name for 2021. How about Popeye's Spicy Chicken Sandwich? I've decided it's chicken. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Welcome back, Garrett Monorail. I remember when you were just a little nugget. No, stop that. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, Thrasher. No, God, <laughs> this is a shirt that I bought because it looked cool. It does look cool. But um, I'm. that's not who I am as a person. Who are you as a person? Uh, I, um, <laughs> we broke her. Her brain's broken. My brain has been broken by an indie game that I'm not going to talk about. New Year's baby McKenna Monterey Ew. is here. <laughs> <laughs> that's gross. <laughs> All right, let's all talk about our New Year's resolutions. Sam, what's your New Year's resolution? Mm, Eat more chicken. (laughs) Okay. No, I'm just kidding. I'm doing 75 hard eventually. Tell people what that is, because that sounds weird. Yeah. Oh, well, for 75 days, it's going to be really hard. (laughs) Nice. That's all you need to know. Part of your fitness journey. Yeah. Your fitness commitment. No, you do two 45-minute workouts a day. One has to be outside. No alcohol. You follow a diet plan with no cheat meals. Mm-hmm. Uh, drink a gallon of water a day and read 10 pages. And you take progress pictures every single day. Do you want to read a Five Nights at Freddy's book? <laughs> <laughs> it has to be a book that you learn from. Yeah, you can learn from them. I've learned a lot. Shut up, McKenna. <laughs> okay, well, that's a probably a more serious resolution than what anyone else is going to have. <laughs> but let's check with Garrett. What's your New Year's resolution? L- less school. That is not a good resolution. See, I told you. Yeah, that's not okay. Well, that's my resolution. I've got a better one. You should do hard 75. <laughs> <laughs> You should do more school. Ew. Double the school. McKenna? I've um, decided not to do the whole New Year's resolution thing because I, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of culture around a New Year's resolution that can lead you to feeling like you can just give it up because that's part of the joke. Mm-hmm. And I love a good joke, so I would. But instead of a New Year's resolution, I'm just going to buy all of the Five Nights at Freddy's books <laughs> and then I'm going to read them. Okay. Embrace yourself. That sounds, love yourself. That sounds like your New Year's resolution. Nope. Because I love those books. And then I'm going to move on to the Minecraft books. Well, it kind of sounds there like... a lot more of those. 
I mean, I did a, I actually completed a New Year's resolution one year where I read a book every single month. It almost sounds like you're going to do that this year with children's novels. Listen, they're for <laughs> teens and they're actually very graphic. In one of the uh, FNAF books, um, in almost every single one of them, someone dies. And one of them, someone, a lady dies by getting stuck in the vents. And you have to watch, like, read about her, like, just deteriorating mentally. This is great. Real positive. I Thanks love for, the Five Nights at Freddy's lore. Thanks for telling us about that on the podcast. Maybe going too much into detail, <laughs> but that's okay. You call them children's books, but children should not be reading them. <laughs> All right. Oh, fine. we should get them for the Dillos kids. No, we should not. <laughs> well, welcome back, everyone. We hope you had a great New Year's hey, Eve, New resolution? Year's Day. My New Year's resolution is to start this podcast. <laughs> fine. <laughs> Today's episode 141 of the Monday Morning Monorail podcast, and it's January 4th. I actually asked that question without having an answer of my own. I know a lot of times when you ask questions, it's because you're just wanting to answer the question, but um, I didn't have one. Maybe it's to lose my quarantine weight that I've gained. I don't know. I know that's lame. I'll come up with something. Yeah. Maybe by the end of the podcast. Do you want to read the Five Nights at Freddy's books? I have no. all of the ones that are out right now. No. I already I don't- figured out. Your resolution for you. Mine? Yeah. What? Get up at 4.45 in the morning with me, and we'll work out together no. every morning. I, I like staying up late, so <sighs> getting up early does not work. You'll do burpees. I mean, I do burpees after I drink my sodies. <laughs> That's awful. <laughs> Why did you make that joke? This is 2021 now, and like I said, as we got into the new year, that we were going to get back to the original show format. Three segments, starting with news, with M34D, and then with our miscellaneous segment at the end. But we're not doing that today. (laughs) (laughs) And the main reason is, we just had a really fun weekend, and we want to do a little trip report for you guys. We stayed in our first ever deluxe resort as a family. It was all about me, but I was the only one celebrating me. It was a birthday celebration for Sam, but it was also a New Year's celebration for all of us. Mm Mm-hmm. And we mixed in a meal that we'd never had before. Yep. At Cinderella's Royal Table. And we also, on New Year's Eve, went to Epcot and completed a drinking around the world challenge Yeah, but maybe some people may say that we cheated, but we'll we'll get into that in a minute. Me and Garrett separated from this, and we did our old thing. I mean, our own thing where we are act like old people. So yeah, you just left. You're like it's getting late. Got to go back to the hotel. Well, before we did that, we sat in the uh, UK and kind of just watched what was happening. I heard. I guess you guys we, we we went to the UK before we ate. Yeah. So, you may have just missed it. They did a New Year's celebration in the UK when it turned midnight in the UK. It did, they did the same thing everywhere in the countries. In Italy, whenever we were going into the restaurant, like then every like there was a countdown and then everyone cheered yeah. because we were right there. You were trying to get us to go into the restaurant while oh. everyone was celebrating the new year <laughs> yeah. in Italy. That's funny. Yeah. I was yeah, I was just trying to get you guys to come inside cuz it was time to eat. I missed it. Well, I didn't know they did it in all the other countries. That's pretty cool. I wonder. I guess they probably do that every year. We've never done Epcot New Year's Eve, so... I know. This was a first-time experience and kind of an odd one, considering the COVID and the fact that they closed before midnight. Mm-hmm. They really did kick us all out. It was true. Yeah, they didn't do torches. No torches. We asked for it, but... So where do you want to start? You want to start with uh, Epcot New Year's Eve, since we're already there? Okay. Let's do it. Want me to go through what me and Garrett did first? Sure. You sure? Go ahead. Yep. Okay. So this is what happened. Um, wait. What did, what did we do, Garrett? What did we, we do? went back to the. Uh, we went back to the room. <laughs> yeah, <you did. laughs> That's true. Um, <laughs> we got in there. I drank a monster because I have issues. I drank chocolate milk. And then we split up from you guys when we went into. Oh, wait, no, that's your. We're talking about an Epcot. Yeah. Yeah. What are you talking about? At the room, I At think. The room. Oh, well, I'm not talking about that anymore. So then we went, we split up from you guys and we went to Mitsukoshi. I bought a Lucky Cat bank and it's amazing and I love it. And I put all of my $2 bills in there. Okay. Because it's lucky. And then uh, Garrett, me and Garrett both got blind boxes. Garrett got a skateboard dog. I got a praying cat. <laughs> 
um and garrett got some pocky okay and we bought it and then we all went and sit, sat down in the uk and opened up our blind boxes because it's kind of a tradition for me and garrett to do that now and just sat there and we made fun of mary poppins why oh she's why would so you because we had, <laughs> she wanted her to say tuesday <laughs> Did she say Tuesday? No. You just Tuesday. wanted her to. We, we, we wanted to ask her to say Tuesday. So you were just making fun of the fact that she has a British accent. Yeah. <laughs> She's British? <laughs> oh, Lord. Wow. Then we met up with you guys for food. Yep. And then we left. And I, I read a lot whenever we got home. I mean, not home. To the, to the room. room. Okay. Sounds like you had such a exciting New Year's Eve. I had fun. I watched. We watched movies too. So I mean, New Year's Eve with Zootopia. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we'll talk about what we did. We made the last minute decision to try to drink around the world for New Year's <laughs> Eve. It's, we started out strong too. Well, and the the thing about it is, if you're going to drink around the world, usually people start this challenge when World Sho- Showcase opens at Showcase, showcase when, <laughs> <laughs> at noon, so that you have the whole evening to do it. And probably they do it on nights where Epcot stays open later than ten o'clock. Hold on, Disney should do a thing with like Nike or something, and in the uh, the presentation pavilion is what I'm going to call it because I can't remember the name of it. Um. They could have the world shoe case. <laughs> okay. And it's different shoes that are popular around the world. This is a good idea. Oh, Lord. I would visit. That's hilarious. <laughs> Just for the pun. But we started, so timing wise, we started around four. Yeah. And we only had till 10. And you had to subtract that we had a dinner at six o'clock in Italy. So that was going to take about an hour away from our time. Mm hmm. I was thinking, and we started in Canada. We did start in Canada. I was thinking that maybe we would be able to make it to Italy in in the the right order, in geographic order, by the time it was time to drink there. But actually, we ended up having to skip America, so we had to go back one. But that's okay. We still made it work. We hit them all. But here's the way that we did it. Knowing that we had a compressed timeline, and knowing Epcot drinks are expensive, we decided to share a drink. In every pavilion. Yes. But we had to make sure that we both drank from the drink to make it count. So we did. Sometimes more than others. I would have more of one and you would have more of another. Yeah. But we we did make it work. So we could kind of... Do you want to... Can you think you can remember what we had in each place? Canada, we had the Ottawa apple. It was an Ottawa apple. It was like Crown Royal with some cranberry and some maple syrup. I was there for that one. You were there for that. Yeah. We that shared one it. was good. It wasn't that strong. No, it wasn't strong. It was mostly cran. It was like sweet with cranberry. You know, it was it was fine. It was fine. Yeah, and then it wasn't my favorite drink, but it was fine. No, and then we went to the UK and we had cider, and we each had a shot of Fireball. That was mistake number one. <laughs> we were just going to do the Fireball cider drink. And then she said, oh, you each are having a shot of Fireball and then cider? We and you like, said yes. Yes. Yeah. I did say yes. But it was your birthday. And so we did that. And then... And, but we were, like, we would get our drinks and then we would find a place to sit down and hang out. If it were up to me, it would have been, like, probably 30 to 45 minutes at each stop. But it was more like maybe 20 at times because we had to pick up the pace. Yeah. Yeah. That was also a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then we made it over to France, mm-hmm. and we had the Grand, orange slush. Grand you missed slush. Uh, what you have in the UK. The U- you, no, she said cider and fireball. Oh, I thought you had that in Canada. I was. I'm That's not the listening. Ottawa apple. Yeah. So we in, had the Grand Marnier slush in France, right? And then Morocco. In Morocco, we had um, what was that? It was the Moroccan Mule. Yeah, Moroccan Mule was fantastic. Yeah, it was good. That one I drank a lot of because I was enjoying it a lot. It was good. We hung out over by the fountain. We did not drink the fountain water. Uh Uh-uh. But it was fig vodka. Mm -hmm. Holy cow. I want fig vodka for real. That was amazing. Um, Yep. And then we skipped along to past America. No, Japan. We went to Japan. Japan. Oh, yes. 
Japan. Japan. Oh, I keep forgetting that you that's right. You forget Japan every time. Um, and we each had our own sake. We did. I had nigori because I like the unfiltered stuff. And I just picked the one that was the most expensive on the menu. Yours was something we had never had before. It was delicious. I wish I knew what it was called. It was it, it was tough to pronounce, I remember. I but I, I suggested, I was like, I think you say it this way. And we got it right. Yeah, whatever. I would have said it right without you. Anyway, look up the menu. What's the name of the place that we bought it from? Is it just... It's just the little sake hut. It's a little have. sake hut. It's not called that. The sake trolley. Yeah. But they the, whatever the most expensive sake drink is, that's what she got. <laughs> it's yeah. my birthday. Yeah. Um, so then we skipped along we to skipped Italy. We skipped along to Italy. We moved past America. In Italy... We actually um, had dinner. We had dinner, and I got the sangria flight. You, we, we shared it. Yeah, but I drank a lot of that. I don't know. I think we were pretty even on it. Okay. But then you... And then I got a coffee martini. The espresso martini. It was delicious. <laughs> yeah, so, so doubled up drinks in Italy. Yeah. And but then you, we drank... While we were eating, and we had pizza in Via Napoli. Oh my gosh, yes. And we had the artichoke pizza with truffle oil on it. Yeah. It was really good. It was yummy. really good. It was really good. And we got calamari. Calamari. Okay, whatever. <laughs> and McKenna got... I had a gin Caesar salad, because I had already had a lot of stuff to eat that day. Yeah. And Garrett got... Spaghetti and meatballs. Spaghetti and Sp- meatballs. Spaghetti. Was it good? Yeah. You had a lot left over, but I know it was a big serving. Mm-hmm. So, it was good. That's the second time we've eaten at Via Napoli, and I enjoyed it. The first time was with Nick Salcedo and yeah. his family, mm-hmm. um, and that's when you got the pear and prosciutto pizza no. that you thought you invented. Cantaloupe. Oh, cantaloupe and prosciutto pizza mm-hmm. that you thought you invented. I did think I invented uh, that. But this time we got the different one, the artichoke and, and truffle oil. It was good. But we needed the carbs, and we needed we needed that to soak up <laughs> the alcohol. So after we were done with our meal, we went back to America, and I ordered the frozen mint julep because that's my favorite drink in World Showcase, probably. Mm-hmm. As of right now, it's my favorite drink in World Showcase. Yep, that was delicious. It was so good. It's fifteen dollars. Most of these drinks are around that anyway. So. Yeah, we were poor. We're poor. Yeah. Um, we need to start a GoFundMe. Where did we did we carry that over? We did because we were behind schedule. So we got the frozen mint julep. Oh, we, we sat down in front of Regal Eagle for yeah, a little while. Yeah, yeah, for a little bit. And then... We then went, we went on to Germany. Yeah, we went to Germany and we got the grapefruit beer. Mm-hmm. I drank that. Most one of that one we did carry to China. Yes. Because we were behind schedule. We were very behind. So we carried the grapefruit beer, the Schafferhofer. We carried that over, picked up the Tipsy Ducks in Love from which the is Joy not my of favorite. Tea Cart in China, which is my favorite. Which became... Justin's birthday party celebration. (laughs) But I had to drink most of that. And then we moved on to Norway where we got this. It was a dark beer called, it was like ice, ice stock. Yeah, it was good. Um, It was a porter. It was like an ice stock Mm -hmm. porter. So you, you had two beers in a row. I had the tipsy ducks in love. (laughs) And then we went to Mexico and I got the classic margarita. And let me just tell you (laughs) at this point, I was done. <laughs> we we were chugging like it got to the end and we were drinking really fast. We were trying to speed up. Yeah. And yeah. Tom got away from us. Yeah, it was it, it was all of a sudden rough yeah. to drink the beer and I can drink beer all day long and I was having trouble. Well, as you know, cuz we've said it before on this podcast, when you order a Tipsy Ducks in Love, they tend to pour that bourbon pretty heavy. And it was all at the bottom of the drink. <laughs> so when I got to the bottom of it, I was just basically sipping bourbon through a straw. <laughs> and then we go and immediately get a margarita. So we went and sat down in the Odyssey. Um, they've got some tables set up. And um, we sat in there for a little while. I drank maybe a third of the margarita. And I was like, I'm going to have to carry this out. So we, <laughs> Sam had a water bottle. We put it in the water bottle. And we went. On Spaceship Earth for our last ride of 2020. Oh, yeah. And Sam yelled that everything was boring in Spaceship Earth. <laughs> I was <laughs> slightly drunk at this point. <laughs> and no one was around. So, in all fairness, because I would never do that. Yeah, it's spaced out because of COVID. Yeah. So. The, the, like, several cars back 
were the next people. It wasn't very busy. We walked right on that ride. We did. And um, so no one was around, really. If people were around, I would have never yelled. Yeah. That's not fair. This was like at 9.50. So the park was closing in like 10 minutes. We rode it. Like when we got off, the park was closed. Yeah. And people were all headed out. Um, so the wait, there was no wait for Spaceship Earth. And they spaced us out. So, yeah, it was funny, though. She just, Sam's not a fan of Spaceship Earth. It's and just, she let fine. her feelings be known to each animatronic individually, <laughs> pointing directly at their faces and telling them, boring. <laughs> that yeah. video is on the Monday Morning Monorail family group on Facebook <laughs> if you'd like to see it. And by the time like we got out of there and we made it back to the hotel room, the next morning whenever I woke up, I was looking at Facebook and I thought that I had dreamed we had went into the workout room, but apparently we truly <laughs> did go in there. We went in and took a picture, and in, took the, a picture. in the fitness center. We did. Yeah. So tips for drinking around the world. Cause this was our first time doing it at all, much less trying to like have a drink all by herself. We didn't do that. But I would say, unless you're drunk stormtrooper level tolerance, <laughs> Here's a couple things. You do need to, like, if you're going to attempt this, you're going to have to start at noon yeah, and go till early. like, 10 or 11. There are 11 countries. We did not get a drink at the outpost in Africa. Mm -mm. I don't know. Do they have alcohol there? I guess maybe beers. I think, I think they do. We didn't do that. So if you did that, that's 12. But my recommendation would be 45 minutes at least in each pavilion. Take your time. Make sure you're drinking water. Yeah, we weren't. Getting greasy food along the way as well yep. to pair with your drinks. And keep in mind, it's going to be expensive because, like I said, most of the drinks are between 12 and $15, somewhere in that range. So you're talking, if you're doing that and food, you're going to be near 200 bucks for an individual by the time you're done. That makes me feel nauseous. <clears throat> That's not even right. Yeah, drinking around the world. So you could go like low end with everything and maybe get closer to like 120 150 somewhere in that range but i'm adding food like you've got to eat you have to eat or yeah. you're going to be miserable and make sure all these places will give you cups of ice water you better do that too yeah <laughs> <laughs> so it was fun though it was fun i don't i really i don't think i could do it if i had all my own drink i mean like if, if, I, if I was getting my early, own in each place i don't know if i could really early maybe well the earliest you can start is noon right yeah, it'd be rough. What are you guys going to do in, in, well, I guess one year from now, not from now, but one year in the future mm -hmm. when I turn 21? <laughs> we're going to make you drink around the world and we're going to be sober. And you're not going to drink? <laughs> no, I would just share a this drink This is with like Mom. you not going with me to the Mothman Festival. <laughs> you know that, right? Why don't you want to hang out no with compares. me on my birthday? I said we're going to, we'll do it, but we just, well, I'm not going to drink my own individual drinks in all country, all the 11 countries. I just can't do it. Dad and I, I will share. I won't drink any alcohol. You're not allowed to. No drinks for Garrett, but he'll be 16 so he can be our DD. No, I'm not. Garrett, you're not the DD. He is. No. He could be. He, Yeah, he can. No, but he's not going to. By the way, that was another reason that we decided to do this. Since we were staying on property and using Disney transportation, we didn't have to worry about driving. Get me a yeah. room at Art of Animation, and I'll just go pass out. <laughs> By yourself? By myself. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what yeah. I did that night. I did not make it to the No, New you Year. didn't make it to New Year. And let's talk about, so this could transition to the hotel. So our first deluxe stay, we were staying at Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge. It's in not the, my first. In the Kidani Village. I'm saying as a family because oh, it's yeah. not my first either. But this was our first deluxe stay as a family. We've always stayed value until now. And we rented DVC points. I'm not going to say which company we use because I'm going to talk to them and see if maybe they would be interested in like potentially coming on the show eventually and talking about the DVC process, like nice. renting points and stuff. Yeah. And we'll see. Then, then we'll plug their company later on. But it was a super easy process to rent the points. It ended up being like half the price of the rate that they were Disney was charging for a room at Animal Kingdom Lodge to do this. So we did go with the deluxe studio. It had one queen bed and then a queen pull-out sleeper sofa. It was a little tight. It was tight. For the four of us, like two adults by themselves would be totally fine. Two adults with a small child, totally fine. Two adults, two teenagers, probably not enough room. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, we gave Justin a lot of grief for this room. I, as per usual. I'm did just we kidding. Get grief. We were kidding. But we did have Savannah View, and that was amazing. 
It was so cool. So the animals are always out, mm-hmm. always, all night long. I got to see these cute little pigs running around. Hogs. Hogs. Whatever they had, they curled their ear hair. <laughs> they don't curl it. That's just part. No, that's how they look. They, they don't go to the salon and get their ear hair curled. They got style, and uh, it was amazing. Yeah, our savanna um, was kind of on the. It wasn't a main savanna. Um, I think it's called the Pim, Pimbe savanna on the backside of Kadani Village. So not like in the horseshoe. It's on the backside of the horseshoe, and we could see there was an Ancoli cow. Mm-hmm. There were these little, we were calling them gazelles, but they said they were springbok, right? I think that's what she said. Um, they looked like the gazelles to me. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a zebra. We had two ostriches. We had, uh, what else was out there? Was that it? Those guys? Yeah. Oh, that, yeah, I guess that was it. That was it. At night, the ostriches would go somewhere. We didn't see them, but we could see like the rest of those things throughout the night. Mm-hmm. And actually, the little... I'm going to call them gazelles because that's what they look like to me. She said that the springbok look a lot like the gazelles. They had the same markings and everything. Okay, maybe they were springbok. I don't know. They would come over like basically right underneath. We were on the fourth floor. They were like right underneath our balcony. Like, And I was saying, I wonder if maybe they get over towards the light of the hotel because it makes them feel a little more comfortable at night. Almost like that way they could see predators if something was coming. But they don't know. They're totally safe. They're fine. But they were awesome. It was so cool to be able to go out. And I spent most of New Year's Eve and post the midnight coming and going out on the balcony partying with the animals. Yeah. The I kids was, were watching movies. Sam was asleep. I, I, I can't do it. I was sitting in the closet. <laughs> Garrett was sitting in the closet. Yeah, Garrett wouldn't get out of the freaking closet. <laughs> Garrett went to Narnia. He did. Um, Mom called me her brother's name. <laughs> <laughs> I did call her Freddie. <laughs> I will say, I think the bathroom also, too small for four adults, basically. The bathroom's confusing. It had, there was a separate room for the toilet, so like, you know, someone could go use the toilet and then, well, someone could be using the toilet, but it didn't take away access to like the sink and shower and all that stuff. When I used the bathroom, I cut off all access to the bathroom. Yes. Well, No one's allowed in there if I'm using the toilet. I will say, I think like the the furniture, the the decorations, the detail, not just in our room, but like just in the resort as a whole was overwhelming, like how detailed and just ornate everything was. Yeah, it's fantastic. You know, the Kadani Village Lobby is smaller than the Jumbo House, but it's still very nice. They have these really cool light fixtures that have these, it makes it look like uh, fire coming out of the light fixtures with these glass pieces, like blown glass. And that's where Sanaa is, of course, in Kadani Vision. We didn't eat at Sanaa this time. So we've eaten there a couple times before. Right now, by the way, other restaurants in Animal Kingdom Lodge closed. There's nothing. Boma, Jiko, and the Mara. The Mara is only open for breakfast, and it's just grab and go. And the gift shop, the only one open is in Kadani. Yeah, Jahari Treasures or something. The it's it's in, the one in Kadani Lobby. Yeah, and the, the big one, in, the one in Jumbo House, House, not open. Not open. Yeah, so, and the lounge, Victoria Falls. Now, our friend Long Island Frank was in town, and I said, I, he was texting me. He said that they went to Victoria Falls and he was having drinks. We went a couple, like the nights that we were there, we didn't see it open. It didn't even look like the bar was stocked with bottles for alcohol. So I don't know what they did. Maybe that was just a New Year's Eve thing. It was crazy. It could have just been New Year's Eve they had it going. It looked like it had been closed for months. Yeah, it looked closed. But um, people were walking around. More than once we had people talk to us like, where do you get food around here? Because everything was closed. Yeah, you get crappy pool food. The pool bars were open. Um, so we did, Garrett and I both had chili cheese dogs at the, at the pool bar over at the, uh, Jumbo house pool, the big pool. Yeah. And it was, you know, your standard chili cheese dog. Like you I get liked it, at, it. Like you get at a sports ball game. Well, I had the chicken Caesar salad and that tasted weird. Yeah. Your chicken was cool. Cause it was like tandoori chicken. Yeah. I, it had a good taste, but the chicken texture was weird. Basically, if you get a salad at a pool bar, it's been in a refrigerator for a day or two. Well, it said that it was made on the 31st, and that was, what, the 1st? Yeah. Or the 30th. It said it was made on the 30th. We were there the 1st. The and it was the 1st that I was eating it. So it's kind of... Yeah, beware. A couple days old. Salads at pool bars. Risky. <sighs> uh, <laughs> trying to be healthy. Gosh. Yeah. 
So sue me. The thing we didn't know until we were leaving was that Sanaa was actually open for quick, casual breakfast. And what they were doing is you actually went into Sanaa, like they didn't have anybody at the host stand, hostess stand. You just walked in and then over towards the lounge, they had a bunch of things set out on tables, muffins, you know, all kinds of pastries, cereals, fruits, lots of different cold drinks. And you could grab that, take it to the bar and pay for it. But also there was a limited breakfast menu. You could order eggs. You could, Mm -hmm. I mean, you could get hot breakfast items right there from the bar. And then all of Sanaa was open for open seating. Like some of the tables were marked like, don't sit here just for spacing. Mm -hmm. But you just found a spot and sat. So we didn't know that until we were leaving. And they had those big chickens walking outside the window, looking at themselves, (laughs) making noise. (laughs) The big chickens. That they're like African crown cranes or something. Yeah. Yeah. They make funny sounds. Garrett, tell us what they sound like. I'm not doing that. (laughs) (laughs) No, they sound weirder than that. (laughs) They sound like a honk. uh, It's like a honk. It's and it's like got two syllables to it. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, um I wish we'd known that. We probably would have done breakfast at Sanaa one day. Yeah. Just to do it. Yeah. But one of the things about Animal Kingdom Lodges, so if you are at the end of one of the rows of rooms, like we were uh, by the time I made it to the workout facility I had already done my warm up and I was ready to work out. <laughs> Because that was a long walk to go to the gym. Yeah, we were at the very end of the Kidani village. Our room was, so basically, the furthest place you could possibly possibly be from the lobby. So that meant long walks to, you know, any food options, the fitness center, the pool. But also, the longest possible walk to the bus to get to the parks. Yeah. Because if even if we'd been in the other wing of Kidani Village, it would have been a shorter walk to the bus. Yeah, it was very long. <laughs> so it was quite a it was quite a trek. Uh, one thing to know is that Kidani Village and Jumbo House have separate bus stops for the buses. When the buses are picking you up, they stop at Kidani Village first and then go to Jumbo House. And when they drop off, they drop off at Kidani Village first, obviously, and then go to Jumbo House. So, like in the mornings, if there's like a morning rush. A bus might fill up at Kidani Village. I'm just saying. It might be worth it for somebody staying at Jumbo to walk over yeah, to I Kidani agree. Village. Didn't think of that, but you're right. But overall, Jumbo House is way nicer. I mean, the lobby is just immaculate. It's, the, it, the lobby is crazy. Yeah, they had a huge, like, four story Christmas tree in the lobby of Jumbo House. They've got one of those cool uh, bridges, kind of like Wilderness Lodge has. Um,. It's big open atrium, multiple floors. You've got these giant uh, vistas looking out over the savannah through these huge windows. Um, Even the area where you can walk out from the lobby to look out over the savannah mm-hmm. is bigger yeah. there than over yeah. at Well, Kadani. yeah. Lots of different places that you can walk to get different views of the savannah outside. And then the area where, like... Uh, Victoria Falls and Jico and, B- and Boma are. It's so cool. Yeah. They've got waterfalls inside and the, these different stairways that kind of crisscross around the waterfalls. And it's just, it's a really cool area. And the pool is so much nicer. Both of them have, both pools at Kidani Village and Jumbo House have water slides. They both have two hot tubs. There's a splash pad at Kidani Village. I don't think there was at Jumbo House. Yeah, I didn't see one. But at Jabo House, they have an area with flamingos. Yeah, they do have a flamingo yeah. area. Right near the pool. Yeah. And they're really cool. Also, that pool is, like, way bigger. And since right now, capacity is, like, way lower for mm-hmm. Jumbo House, the pool doesn't have it's pretty very empty. many people in it at all. Yeah. We ended up driving over to Jumbo House and because there's no way we would have wanted to walk it. It's very far, but we uh, we drove over to Jumbo House and went to the pool there because it was much more spaced out and uh, gave us a lot of room to enjoy. Plenty of open chairs. It was very nice. They did movies under the stars, but we missed that. I'm trying to think if there was anything else I wanted they to say about some, the pools. Like trivia, I heard. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was trivia some happening. Some of the cast members doing trivia. 
I thought that was cute, but I also was really disappointed in all of those children not knowing who played the genie yeah, I know. in Aladdin. I, I know. was like, are you kidding? They had no idea. They but, said Will Smith. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually was pretty frustrated with our parents more than them. I mean, you should teach your children better. Teach your children well. Oh, that's a good song. <laughs> <laughs> so... I would say, and then I want to talk about like what happened when we were leaving, but just overall review of Animal Kingdom Lodge. It's a really cool experience. It feels, other than Animal Kingdom, it feels like you're far away from the parks because the bus ride to Magic Kingdom and Epcot was kind of long. It is, yeah. So that takes up time from your day. If you have a car, you'd probably rather drive, I would say. And actually, it's very close to the Target. It is close to Target. We drove to Target. It's close to the Solar McDonald's if you want McDonald's. Yeah, everything's pretty close off property because it's so far off property almost. It's right on the edge. Yeah. So much so that we, when we were out on our balcony, we could actually see a building that was a non-Disney. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it was a hotel or apartments or what it was. Yeah. Which is somewhat unusual, staying on Disney property. But I don't think I would want to stay Kidani Village again. I don't think so either. I really like... Animal Kingdom Lodge, I'd want a bigger room if we were staying, which is not, doesn't make sense because, you know, it's so expensive, but that's what I would prefer, or at least ability to get to things a little bit easier on Disney property. I feel like we were far out from everything, but gosh, getting to be near the animals though yeah the the selling point is obviously the view of the savannah i kind of feel like if you were imagine if you were staying kadani village you had a non-savannah view room and it was far from the lobby yeah like what would be the benefit nothing i would be very disappointed especially with all of the restaurants closed except for sanaa i mean sanaa's great but you're only going to want to eat that once on your stay probably yeah i don't know so bread service is awesome. <laughs> you can order it to the room too. And, and right now they're doing Sanaa um, takeaway. Like you can, yeah. you can order and take your food back to your room. What did you guys think? I was going to kill Garrett. Yep. Oh, just because of <laughs> sleeping in the, on the pullout with the him. pullout is not comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't sound you comfortable. You can feel the bars. And I was like, Oh, that's kind of how it always is with pullouts. Yeah. yeah. But I didn't. Yeah. yeah. It was fine. But whenever we, I stayed at Beach Club with yeah. um, Allison, like I had a little pull down bed and it That's was not a pull out. Comfy. It's not like a folded folded up mattress inside of a sofa, right? It's just we a had, fold down from the wall. When we went to Pop right. Century we had a bed that you can pull down, right? Yeah, those the were, Murphy bed. Those are fun. It's just Murphy bed. That was just a bed that, yeah. like a normal those bed. Those are just up. comfortable. They yeah. should really consider making that. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And just put a couple chairs in a room. Yeah. I guess though they have to have room for a couch in there. Where would you where would you put the Murphy bed? I don't even I don't know where they'd put it. On the wall. Yeah, but where would you put the couch? Because you can't move the whole couch. You could turn the Murphy bed into whenever it's upwards a sitting thing and then it doesn't those. have to be a couch. Or if you have more than two people or need more than one bed, maybe just don't and you have a large, like, get a adult. room. <laughs> yeah. Get a one-bedroom suite, maybe, or, or something bigger, because the deluxe studio just probably wasn't enough for, for four grown people. Oh, my gosh. But yeah. seriously, sitting outside with the animals was It was really amazing. nice. There, there were some really nice positives. I mean, I loved the time out on the balcony. Yeah. I was a little disappointed our Savannah didn't have a giraffe. I agree. That's one thing I missed was... A giraffe and one of those little pigs to stay, but they would run away and go to other places. So. Um, also, by the way, just to throw this in there, I do think Disney has got to do something about the fact that this is a deluxe resort and you could hear your neighbors flushing their toilets. I Happy could he- New Year! I could hear the people... <laughs> above us walking in their room and i know they weren't trying to be noisy they were just walking around and it was late it was new year's eve but i could hear them throughout the night walking in their room Mm -hmm. heavy feet just like sam shut up uh and like you could hear people really loudly if they were um if they were talking like our neighbors talking in their room and in the hallway it was really loud yeah they were just answering their phone i and i could hear their whole conversation on the phone yeah which was Shocking. I don't expect rooms to be soundproof at hotels, but I expect a little bit a better. Muffled, than that. 
muffle at least. Yeah. It wasn't even muffled. It was pretty loud overall. Mm. So, which is odd because right now the rooms, they're not selling all the rooms or anything. It's supposed to be. Shouldn't have people so close. I know. (laughs) So. What's up with that? I would like to try, like whenever it is fully open again, all the restaurants, shops, everything. I would like to try staying in a Jumbo house room with a Savannah view. And see what we think about that. It may be a even better experience. I didn't hate it. It's just that to be a deluxe experience, I would have hoped that I was blown away. And I was more like, yeah, this is good. Like, I would give it, on a deluxe scale, I would give it a 7. Yeah. The only reason why I give it a 7 is because the animals, if the animals weren't there, it would drop significantly to like a 3. Yeah. No, for me, it'd be like a five, maybe. Yeah. If, if there were no animals. That's how I feel. I've never stayed in a deluxe resort Well, I know, before, but so I don't know you've stayed to... in nice hotels. Uh, when, well, no. I've, I mean, I've been to other deluxe resorts. Mm-hmm. and You have too, Kenna. Yeah. I there was definitely ones that I'd rather Pretty stay at. Good. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know how to judge this. Okay. So, no rating from McKenna in our... I don't know. I just think that it was amazing and um, a lot of fun. What really, really topped everything off was our last day. Yes. So So, now talk about that. Well, we wanted to go and check out the animals because, like we said, our savannah didn't have all the animals. Mm -hmm. So I really wanted to see those little pigs again and hogs. And um, and we wanted to see giraffes, and we wanted to see those chickens. And so... <laughs> They're not chickens. No, but those those things. And so we went around, and we, we walked to um, the front of Kadani, and we went to the area outside of the outside uh, of Sanaa, Sanaa yeah. area. And, you know, a guy was talking to us about the crown chickens and um we left there um and we went over to the pool area because we were trying to find the pigs Mm -hmm. and um when we went over there this lady amanda the cast member uh no just some random lady amanda (laughs) no cast member amanda from michigan (laughs) she was so sweet she started to talk to us, and the bird Casanova was there mm-hmm. that we saw on TV. As seen on The Magic of Disney's Animal Kingdom, Casanova is a hornbill. Mm-hmm. And she starts talking about him, and she was like, this is Casanova. And I was like, wait, yeah. is it he on TV? And she yeah. was like, he is. He came, he came over and put on a little show for us. He did. He was so He's such a ham, and yeah. he, apparently he loves people. And you but he tell. has a lady friend that he... And he doesn't pay know. Much, um, enough attention to. Yeah. He wishes yeah. she was human. He doesn't know how to flirt with her exactly. But then I started we... like dancing around her. He was like jumping around and like whacking his beak in, into hers. Yeah. <laughs> they were really cute. I mean, um, apparently they make a mess of all the other animals' food. Yeah. Um, throw their hay everywhere. So um, we just made a comment. That we were trying to find the pigs. The hogs. The stop. <laughs> Spy, it's the pigs. Curly t- curly ear hair pigs. Um, and so the lady was like, oh, we could probably, um, you know, do a quick look for them. Well, what she said was, if you have a couple minutes, we could probably get a closer look. Yeah. And so she starts on her walkie and says that it's her and... Then she said, "Some I thought she was going to ask if people knew where they were yeah. so we could go look for them. Or bring them over or something. Yeah. That's what I thought, too. Um, and then she was like, I, you know, uh, Amanda with a, fam- or a party of four, and I just want to let you know I'll be stepping away. And so then all of a sudden, she opens a gate to the back door area to walk out to look at the savannah where the cast members are allowed to go but nobody else it's where the trainers go and stuff yeah so she walked us out there i literally was like oh god i'm gonna cry (laughs) (laughs) it was insane like seriously so we walk and it i mean you can see the little piggies back there you can see um the copies copies, uh the water water buck buck 
Um, she said those are really stinky, but they look very furry and cuddly. <laughs> um, and there were um, some other kind of gazelle. Yeah, I don't know what those were. The Thompson gazelle? Yeah, I think that's what she said was Thompson. Was that what they were? Maybe. Something like that. Um, but, I mean, like, we got to see all these animals. Mm-hmm. Um, and I honestly, like... I didn't expect her to take us back there. No. Her heart stopped when she started opening the gate because I was like, oh, we're going backstage. Yeah, this was, <laughs> yeah, it's like the cast member only access. And I think that when the resort is fully functional, there are tours that you can take during the day that are free for the guests. Like you can just go and take these tours. And she said that right now, this is like about as good as they can do is for like a private tour because everything's shut down. So she walked us, and I think, again, I think this was called the Pimbe Savannah. It's on the backside where the pool is for Kadani Village. If you're looking out towards where Casanova is and things, she just took us behind these big gates and walked us all basically right around the footprint of the resort, but down on the deck where the keepers usually are, the animal keepers. Um, So we couldn't have been closer. I know. It was... That was fantastic. Yeah, and she very knowledgeable about the animals. The she next did. step closer would have been going into the savannah. Yeah, yeah. So, Can't do that. I mean, why not? But but she, you know, was very friendly and kind, and and she had this uh, enthusiasm that you could tell that she loved the animals, and she was saying that she likes doing things like this when she can tell the people are really excited about the animals. And it was just awesome. It was such a surprise. Yeah, it was very exciting. I don't know. I mean, that was just a neat way to end everything. Yeah. I did take a video of that, too, and I'll post that. Um, it's about a four and a half minute video that I took because I didn't film the whole thing. But I'll put it on the Monday Morning Monorail family group this week. So if you guys want to see it, I'll post it there. But we were back there for like 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. Easy. And she didn't seem to be in a rush to hurry us out or anything. Yeah. It It was was awesome. It was so cool. Totally unexpected. We had no idea that that was even something that could be done. So that was such a nice surprise and a nice way to end your birthday stay at the Animal Kingdom Lodge. Yeah, she didn't even know it was my birthday. She just gave me a present without (laughs) without even knowing. Yeah. I don't know. What did you think about it, Garrett? It was was really nice that she, she let us, like, go there mm-hmm. and see the animals up close we kept getting s- stared at by those what are they water the water buck. buck like they kept looking at us and they had really funky faces <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i like them <laughs> reminded me of deer yeah they did they they kind of were looking at us like uh why are you guys down here exactly. yeah yeah they i don't think they were too thrilled apparently she said those things like excrete some kind of oil Mm -hmm. on their fur so that way they're waterproof Mm -hmm. which is why they're a water buck Mm -hmm. um but apparently it smells yeah it doesn't smell great really bad they were hiding in the weeds Uh uh-huh but we could see them we could see them their heads were poking out yep they had big faces looking at us yeah that was so cool so that increased the enjoyment overall of our stay i think Mm mm-hmm and it was really cool that they did. That. I mean, ca- again, we've said it before. We'll say it again. Cast members make the magic at Disney. Yeah. If it, um, I mean, we just definitely need to make sure we appreciate them appropriately. And we did do a cast member compliment for her on our Twitter. I hope that she gets the recognition she deserves. Yeah, we were lucky to meet her mm-hmm. at that time. For sure. Okay, last thing I wanted to talk about to wrap up today's show was our surprise lunch on New Year's Day at Cinderella's Royal Table. This was something, by the way, I say it's surprised because we didn't plan this at all. It was very last minute, and it just popped up as available like a couple days before when I was checking for possible reservations at Magic Kingdom to have a nice New Year's Day meal, either dinner or lunch. I didn't care which. It was an odd time. It was 2.25, <laughs> so it's not really dinner or lunch probably why it became available but we snapped it up because even though they're doing things a little bit differently at cinderella's royal table right now this was one of those things we've always wanted to experience i kind of feel like it's the pinnacle of dining in the magic kingdom and i wanted to do it like a bucket list item and right now it's a little bit discounted because you don't get the full princess experience 
But Cinderella makes several appearances. She shows up, she waves, she, she shows leaves. up, she waves, she leaves. She's got a bouncer that kind of looks like that Cobra Bubbles guy from he Stitch. He was giant. <laughs> he looked like he, he would eat a baby for breakfast. <laughs> so if anybody tried to approach Cinderella, they probably would have had to deal with him. <laughs> he was big. He was a big guy. <laughs> yeah. Because she keeps distance. She stays up. Like when she comes out, the server's... They stay away and they don't run around and people are kind of asked to stay in their seats while Cinderella's out. Mm -hmm. Um, And she makes her way around this little kind of, the dining room is like sunk in, but there's like a ledge that has some tables on it. And she kind of walks around that raised up area and and waves at everybody. Plenty of time for pictures. She comes out and says hello. And then there's also like 15 minutes later, they do like this little magical presentation where she makes the room sparkle. Yeah. And the cutest thing, um, at one point, she came out, and the family, I guess, had just gotten there, and they were in their seats, and she comes out, and this little girl screamed. Screamed her head off, like, <laughs> in excitement that Cinderella was in the room. It was awesome. <laughs> and actually, I, it was really sweet, because Cinderella was blushing. <laughs> yeah, that was really awesome. Yeah. It was funny. Um that's the kind of magic you love to see for the kids. There were kids that were dressed up in their princess dresses. There were kids that were dressed up as princes. Mm-hmm. Um, we were not dressed up for this meal, and it made me feel like we didn't do it right. I was wearing yoga pants. <laughs> I was wearing a t-shirt. I was probably also wearing a t-shirt. t-shirt. I was wearing a sleeping gown. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Frank's Frank sleeping, sleeping gown. <laughs> Frank has a sleeping gown. He does. He, Why? It's, it's totally a gown. He yeah. wore it on our Christmas show. Yeah. Uh, Parks and Monorail's most magical hour live Tuesday nights at eight thirty. Oh, wowie. <laughs> okay. Um, but anyways, it was so cool. Like, first of all, how awesome is it to be eating in Cinderella's castle? That's yeah. cool. Location you can't get better than that in the Magic Kingdom. When you check in, you actually walk into there's like this foyer area that has there's like a coat of arms and. There's like all these like stained glass uh, windows around, like lots of different cool things to look at. Then you can either go up a spiral staircase to get to the dining room, which it's a couple stories up, or you can ride a small elevator. We did the spiral stair- staircase because you got to do a spiral staircase. Yeah, you have to. And and then we were seated actually down in the sunken in area, kind of in the center of the dining room, which gave us a good view of. When Cinderella came out, but also we could see out the windows decently Mm -hmm. um, out into fantasy land. And it was it was so cool, like beautifully decorated, very immersive. And by the way, delicious food. Very good. Crap. (laughs) It was three courses, three course meal. It's one of those meals that, you know, they call it what prefix meal. Yeah. Where you pay us a set price per adult. And then you get an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert. Mm -hmm. And the drinks are included unless you order alcohol. The alcohol is extra. I feel like that's the way to do it. I prefer it like that. For uh, appetizers, there were several several options. There was a charcuterie board. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There was a beef and barley soup. They have seasonal soups, but it was beef and barley this time. And then there was a salad. Yeah. I went with the beef and barley soup, which was good. It's, it's like a small portion, but it was tasty, but it wasn't like the best thing I've ever had. It was really small. It was small. I liked it, though. I mean, imagine beef and barley soup. That's what it tasted like. Yeah. You guys had, all three of you got the we charcuterie. Got the charcuterie board. Yeah, it, that was good because it had like prosciutto, a salami, and... Royal it, pickles. It, royal. Castle pickles. Royal castle pickles. pickles. <laughs> they were castle pickles, but they were sweet. I was hoping they were going to be those tiny pickles that they served at Epcot. Oh, yeah. With the... Um, at Regal Eagle? No, the cheese. Oh. oh you're talking German. Oh, no, oh, not oh, German. Oh. It was uh, Switzerland. Yeah, yeah, where we got the um, the cheese, the melty cheese. Oh. On the potatoes. And they give the you those tiny little pickles. Those are the best pickles. They are good. Yeah, and they had like a chicken dip... Mm-hmm. That and chicken dip was awesome. It that was, was my favorite. Good. And toast. Mm. Toast. Pieces and, of butter toast. And uh, ground mustard or something. Yeah, it was chunky mustard. It was good. Mm-hmm. I sampled I sampled from your plates. I liked it. I mean, but seriously, my favorite, I really enjoyed my entree. Yes. So let's tell them about the entrees then. I had a lamb shank. So, so did I. Up. Yeah. It had... Uh, uh, cannelli beans, is that how you say that? 
Sure. With sausage and hog. Some veggies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. With hog and <laughs> pigs. With pig and <laughs> veggies and was, stuff. Wait, there was an extra meat? I thought no, it was just I'm, lamb. I'm, it was just lamb. No, in um, the beans, though, they did have cut up sausage. Oh, was there? Okay. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I didn't find any sausage. You in mine. found it. You just didn't realize it. Probably nope. just thought it was more bean. Nope. There was um like chunks of radish or something. That mm. wasn't a radish. That was that was sausage. No, it wasn't. <laughs> anyway. But it was good. It was good. delicious. It, it was felt good. right off the bone. Um, the lamb did. It was awesome. I also sampled this off of their plates, mm-hmm. and it was very good. I made Garrett eat some. Yeah. Garrett got the special, which, was, well, they always have a fresh fish, but you don't know what it's going to be. It was salmon. It was like, wasn't it like a, a plank, a wood plank salmon? Something like that. And they served it with um, was it, Garrett? noodles and chorizo. It was salmon was the fish. Yeah. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what was on it. Well, I know that they served it with garlic noodles with chorizo, so that did have another meat. And um, I don't know if it came with another side, but... Very good. Yeah. Salmon was tasty. The noodles and it, it wasn't like long spaghetti noodles. It was like these little short noodles. Mm-hmm. Um, and they had little chunks of chorizo, which was very spicy. It was a good sauce. The sauce was tasty that they put yeah. with that salmon. It was really good. Yeah. And then I got the beef tenderloin, which was served on mashed potatoes. And it came with these giant asparagus. I've never seen spears of asparagus that were this fat. Um, but it was so good. Like, honestly, I'm going to say something. It's going to break Bob's heart right now. Cocktail Bob, I keep calling him. Bob the bartender. Our friend Bob. Bob Bob Tinder. and Christina. We get it. We've been... I'm Bob just... I'm telling Tinder. you who I'm talking about. Bob. Not Skipper Bob. Bob Tinder. <laughs> um, are you listening, Bob, now? Have I gotten your attention? <laughs> oh, my God. He gets it. <laughs> this steak, way better than the steak we got at California Grill. Oh, Yeah. It was oh, yeah. so good. I don't know. Maybe it was an off night at California Grill when we went, but this steak was so much better. It was tender. It was juicy. It didn't taste like a pot roast. I know. That steak at California Grill was so disappointing. Yeah. So I was pleased with it. Let's be honest. This is an expensive meal. I don't know on a normal and under normal circumstances if I would have paid... Because I think it's like, for adults right now, it's $62 Ugh. per adult. Let's not talk about it. I don't know that necessarily any of the meals that we got, you could justify and say, yeah, sure, it's, yeah, I would pay that again. But you're also paying for the experience, the location, everything else. I got a wand. You did I get a wand. I got On the way out, on the way out. I also got a sword. When you're leaving, you get to choose. You either get a wand or a sword. I didn't get either, and now I feel like I should have gotten something. Yeah, yeah. loser. Me and Garrett fought throughout the Magic Kingdom. <laughs> you did. You were fighting in front of the castle. I should have gotten a picture of that. And everyone has a star-shaped bruise on their butt after I got yes. done with the wand. Yeah, because mom's aggressive for no good reason. And like <laughs> smacking people on the butt with her wand. Oh, I like high knees. And, uh, <laughs> but I'll just say, like, I, I think it would be cool to go back when... Again, when things are back to normal and things are fully functioning to get the full princess experience. But this was really nice. We didn't talk about dessert because I had the most amazing dessert. I forgot about dessert. Okay. Um, I got a cheesecake, but it's flavored. It was a deconstructed, but it's flavored seasonally. Mm -hmm. So it was a gingerbread cheesecake and it was amazing. Mm -hmm. So good. It had roasted pumpkin seeds on it. Oh my gosh. It was delicious. (laughs) It would, and it looked pretty, yeah. and it had spiced cakes mm-hmm. in squares around it. I was pretty jealous. You had chocolate straws, chocolate straws, and there was like honey or something on the edges. Yeah. It was so good. It was good. It wasn't my favorite. It was my favorite. Yeah, Garrett got the clock strikes twelve. Yeah. What was that? It was a, a lot of chocolate. It was like all chocolate, chocolate mousse yeah. in like a chocolate casing. Uh, with a chocolate clock on top of it that you cracked mm-hmm. into several pieces by whacking it with your fork. Um, Did you like it? Yeah, it was good. I actually liked Garrett's the most. Really? It was it was very good. Yeah. It was tasty. You and I both got the coffee-based one. Mm-hmm. Do you know what it was called? It was pu- 
coffee pots. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Hold on. I actually had the menu pulled up. Um, it was called Coffee Pots to Cream, and it was coffee infused coconut custard, passion fruit gel, and um, crumbled chocolate espresso beans. And Which I ate the espresso beans off the top because those were tasty. That's why you were whacking people with your wand afterwards. Yeah, I was really hyped up. And uh, it was good. But for me, that one was a little too rich or something. Like a little bit. And I was like, eh, I don't know. if I didn't finish it. I, the passion fruit in the middle didn't go. It was strange. It was a strange combo. I love passion fruit. and. Yeah. Whenever Do you have a passion for passion fruit? I have a passion for passion fruit. Um, but whenever you put it with the coconut coffee cream, yeah. it just didn't work. Yeah. I recommend them going with something more basic like raspberry. Garrett, didn't yours have vanilla in it? It had like a little bit in okay. the middle. In the middle. Yeah. I All the desserts were good, but I just I preferred Garrett's. I'll say this. I think the dessert selection at Be Our Guest is better. Yeah. Although, the cupcake they gave me for my birthday oh, yeah, you got at a Cinderella's Royal Table, that was a good little cupcake. It was probably the best cupcake you've had in Magic Kingdom. I usually don't like cupcakes yeah. at Magic Kingdom. They're usually pretty dry. And I ate the entire cupcake except for the little bit that you ate. If we're talking about Be Our Guest in comparison, mm-hmm. I really, really enjoyed my appetizer at Be Our Guest yep. way more than I enjoyed my appetizer. Did you get the escargot? No. Nope. What did you get? I got, um, it was soup. The, it was oh, lobster, the lobster bisque. bisque. Yeah. And it was amazing. Oh, I would take lobster bisque over mm-hmm. beef and barley. Yeah, for lo- sure. I love lobster yeah, bisque. Yeah, I would have taken the lobster bisque. If I could mix and match. Yeah, I would take the escargot over the beef and barley. It was good. Yeah. No. I liked it. Mm-hmm. I, I think... I don't mind to eat snail. Like, I'll eat snail. I've eaten snail several times now. But um, the way that they prepared it, I felt like I could tell it was snail. Yeah, I I mean, yeah. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) But I've had snow before where it's not so noticeable. Yeah. I think coming out of Cinderella's Royal Table, though, my immediate takeaway was it was the best meal we've had at Magic Kingdom. Yeah. That's what I thought overall. Well, that lamb. That lamb's what set it apart. Really good. And those beans. I love beans. I I think the entrees, the three entrees we had were a solid... Um, check mark over be our guest like be our guest was good but i can't like i got the steak from there and i, I think too. i think my steak at cinderella's royal table is better i didn't I like so. my uh, dessert at be our guest i remember uh, not liking it i don't remember what i got but you got something that didn't have fruit in it or something because i don't like fruit uh, in my dessert i think it's a disgrace <laughs> so they gave you the same of this one dessert that they had that's right and they just didn't Add the fruit. Yeah. Yeah. I got the one that had the three different desserts. It had the gray stuff. And then there was the little uh, chip white chocolate cup. Anyway, we're not reviewing Be Our Guest right now. I just think their dessert options were stronger. But entrees, I think Cinderella's Royal Table. Location, Cinderella's Royal Table is better. But Be Our Guest is so pretty. It is pretty. It is pretty. But I just... I give Cinderella's Royal Table the edge on that one. So... Good reviews. Yeah. I would I say it's recommend. worth it's worth doing, uh, even though the experience has changed right now, it's worth doing. If it's something that you've got on your bucket list, you know, it's a little bit discounted right now, so maybe do it. Yeah. So, I guess to top it all off for me was, I just, um, thank you guys for my birthday weekend. You're welcome. I had an amazing time. Happy birthday. Yeah. Animal yep. Kingdom Lodge was really great. Eating at Cinderella's Royal Table was amazing. I got to meet um, Long Island Frank yep. and Samantha Osh. <laughs> how you say it? That's how you say it. I, I, she can tell us. I always thought it would be Ock. Ock. Like a hard C-H. But okay. you say Osh. If you're listening, know. what's up, girl? Can you tell me how to say your last name? <laughs> and then, um, and that was fantastic. And all the shout-outs from everybody for my birthday. Thank you very, very much. 
Um, I love you, Jenna and Allison. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I had a really good birthday, and if we want to keep it going, <laughs> no, it's over now. <laughs> we can. So it was a good birthday, but it's over now. Oh, that's depressing. Well, it's official. I'm old. We have <laughs> to move on to starting to celebrate Garrett's birthday since his is next. His Except is for his. you know, in in the family, we know that Jen's birthday yeah, Jen's is birthday's next, next. But happy birthday, Jen! <laughs> it's time to switch to Jen's birthday celebration. Her and Sam, Samantha, have the same close general time area birthday. Yeah, frame birthday. Happy so. birthday to Samantha as well. Woo woo! Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I had a great time. A lot of unique experiences for us on this mm-hmm. short weekend. Two nights. We just stayed two nights. We didn't do a lot of time in the park. And by the way, if you're wondering what our first ride of 2021 was in Magic Kingdom, we didn't ride anything. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't had our first ride of 2021 We yet. haven't. It was too busy and it was hard to socially distance. So we yeah. went, we ate, we met friends and we And left. we left. Yeah. That's all we did. Yeah. So. But we are at... We do live here, so that's a luxury. We I thought you were about to plug our Twitter, but we are at Morning Monorail. But we are at Morning Monorail. <laughs> Monday Morning Monorail everywhere else. Yeah. You can join the, join the Monday Morning Monorail family on Facebook. Don't forget to visit our Tee Public store, brand new designs oh, featuring the hashtag Save the Muppets. We got some Muppet shirts. Yeah, they're all really cool. Go check them out and buy them. Yeah. And um, L E M D O Z. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. Land, Land Dawes. He'll be with us next week because M34D will be back on Tuesday night. Parks and Monorail's most magical hour at 8 30. That's on the Dillo's Diz YouTube page and on the Monday Morning Monorail Family Facebook group. You can stream it in either place. Our first of the year. Who knows what we're going to do? Who knows? Who knows? Nobody. We're going to celebrate Jen's birthday. That's what we're going to do. But yeah, you can contact us through email. You can call us. And by the way, guys, we got a voicemail. <gasps> Would you like to hear the voicemail we got? I do want to hear it. Okay. So this comes from our friend Donna. She's over in California. She's been a longtime friend of the show, a big supporter, always really, really kind. And I wanted to play this message. This came after our mailbag episodes. So here is the voicemail from Donna. Hi, Monday morning, Monorail family. This is Donna from California. I listen every week, and I have for all of your podcasts. I want to tell you, you guys are more than positive, helpful, kind, and some of the best family and people I've ever heard on any podcast. And Landon just makes your podcast sparkle. So I must say, you guys are great. Anyway, have a good week. Know you're loved out here. Talk to you soon. Bye. Aww. Thanks, We're Donna. loved. We're loved out there. And, by the way, Landon, I don't know about sparkle. He does. He brings the sparkle. <laughs> I agree with her. But that is so kind. Thank you. Yeah, we try to bring positivity, and I realize maybe some of our talking points may differ from others, but then those people should check their values. But anyways, <laughs> oh, whoa, I'm uh, back. <laughs> <laughs> I said I was only going to be positive in 2021, so um, I just, I really do. I'm uh, only going to be negative in 2021 oh, if man. you're only going to be positive. Counteraction. No, I really appreciate this, um, Donna. It means a lot. The cat. The cats are visiting us now. The cats are, they're like stop we want attention yeah they want us to be done so we're gonna wrap it up but again we love you too donna donna's awesome i love donna thank you feel free to call our voicemail 407-917-2144 we love hearing from you guys email us twitter facebook whatever you want to do you can catch us on tuesday if you don't do that we'll see you next monday and until then we hope you have a magical week Skelligummy everywhere. Skelligummy yep. everywhere. I have a secret Twitter account. Uh oh. Don't tell people. I'm never going to release it. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye bye. 
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for riding with us today. We hope you enjoyed the journey and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Until then, we want to hear from you. Send us questions, comments, and suggestions on Twitter at Morning Monorail. Our email address is mondaymorningmonorail at gmail.com. You can also call our voicemail at 407-917-2144. As we approach the station, gather your belongings and please watch your step as you exit. <laughs> See y'all.